thank you, everyone. Um, first of all, we do have handouts for after the session. If you're interested, I've got a handout um, and swag nets. So these are magnets uh, with superhero pandas of all different types um, with the URL to all of the session information on it. Um, and there are a number of swag nets. Um, and looking out, you could probably all get a swag net. Um, but I also have the handout. Uh, the handout is not specific to this session. The handout is more kind of discussing what we've been doing at Richland for about the last five years in regards to retention. So Richland Community College, uh, we're from Illinois, and we have about 2,500 students and about 700, and that you know bounces here and there, but about 700 online students. So we've got a pretty good online program. Uh, in the course of me working at Richland, uh, retention has been a really big issue. When I first started, no one had really even started paying attention to retention at all, and so I kind of made it my mission. So my mission was retention. Uh, and so the handout that I actually have up there kind of is my last five years on paper. This is what I've been doing. Uh, so my focus initially was on, I thought we should be preparing our students and our faculty. So I didn't think they were ready for the online environment. I thought that's where a lot of the retention issues were coming from. So what we did was institute some mandatory trainings for both our students and our faculty. So that's what this sheet talks about. We had really good success. So we actually were able to significantly improve our retention rates, but there was still something lacking. So we were preparing our students, we're getting our students ready, but then they'd still get in the classroom and obviously we're still missing some of them. There's still a lot of students who are at risk. There were still a lot of students that uh, preparing them just wasn't enough. And so this kind of led me to what my presentation is gonna be about today. Uh, and yes, that is me, if you can see, underneath the uh, Superman statue. Uh, ben didn't know that Metropolis is a real place. Yes, people, you can go to Metropolis and you can stand underneath the huge Superman statue. Southern Illinois, mark it on your bucket list. So, to start out with, it is really difficult to detect at-risk students. I don't know about you guys, but most of my at-risk students don't come running up and, hey, hey, me, 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 I need help, I need help. Now, yeah, you might get some here and there, but overall, your online students don't really self-identify when they're really at risk. Um, also, we can prepare them to succeed. We can do as much as we possibly think we can to prepare them, get them ready, so they're gonna be successful, but ultimately, we have little to no control over once ha what happens once they get into that online environment. There are so many different factors. Uh, we could actually make an entire presentation just out of all of the different factors that affect retention in an online classroom. Well, we're not gonna talk about all of that. What we're gonna focus on is, first of all, that we can't wait to help these students. Because by the time you realize a student's failing, you've lost that student. How many of your failing students are you able to keep going and to have them actually pass the class successfully? Or do they just drop? So we really can't wait. We, we can't kind of mess around and think, oh, you know, I'll, I'll watch my grade book. And once that student dips into a D or an F, you know, that's when I'm gonna start offering services. That's a little bit too late. So it's time to be a sur superhero. You guys, you all ready? Yeah, we're gonna be superheroes? All right. So which superheroes do you guys think are up for this challenge? You know, maybe Spider Panda, you know? <laughs> who, who do you think's up for this challenge? Well, in my tool belt, the people and the superheroes that I want on my side are Canvas and Aspire Analytics Dropout Detective. Those are my two superheroes, and that's what we're gonna be talking about today. So to start out with, there is a lot of power in Canvas. So Canvas has a lot of analytic information. Uh, I could go into it a huge session just on all of this, so I'm just gonna kind of briefly, I don't know how many of you are very experienced with Canvas. Uh, some of you might be really new, some of you might be like, I could teach you a thing or two. So I'm just gonna kind of show a little bit of what it is, I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail. If you have questions, if you want more information, please contact me, I'll be happy to explain more. This is just kind of to make sure you're primed and you know what I'm talking about. So first of all, Canvas course analytics, you go into a course, right over there on your right, you'll see View Course Analytics. There's your course analytics. In that page, you're gonna get your student overview. Okay, this is a pro tip, all right? This is one thing. Not everyone realizes you can actually organize page views, your participations, and your current score, your grade there, top to bottom or bottom to top. So if you're a, you're a faculty member and you wanna say, hey, which one of my students haven't logged in and looked at a lot of pages, you can go here and instead of kind of like scrolling back and forth, you just click the page view button there and it'll automatically do that for you. So a little pro tip there, it's kind of cool. But 
let's take a closer look at what Canvas provides. So if you go in, you click on a button, uh, a student, and you get this huge student analytic page. And you can't see any of this, right? Yeah, I didn't think you could. So I tried to make it a little bigger for you. So this is the activity report. Um, it's still a little hard to see. Uh, basically what it's showing is both activity, and that's gonna be in your blue, and then it's gonna show the students who have actually done something, and that's in kind of your orangish color. And so this is just kind of a good view to see what are my students doing? Are they actually, is the student doing anything at all? Um, are they dropping off? You have a communication report. This is really, really cool. And in fact, as a faculty member, you guys should seriously go and look at some of these for your students. You will be blown away because you'll be thinking, I don't email my students that much. Yeah, you, you, you do. But how much do your students actually reply back to you? The student replies are at the top, faculty are at the bottom. This is a really cool page to go look at, and it's kind of telling. If you're emailing the student a whole lot and the student is not responding, there may be a problem going on. Oh, or you just may be a compulsive emailer and email a lot. I mean, whichever. Um, you also have the assignment report that shows how often the students turn things in on time, late, um, the whole window there. A uh, grade report, similar, similar uh, except this kind of shows the range of where the student ranks against everyone else. Um, this is a new one. Okay, how many of you, this is a really cool new feature, have actually gone in, clicked on your people link, and see not just last activity, but total activity. This is new, Canvas just got this one uh, as of last Saturday. So the big thing though, because people might be saying, well, wait a second, my students have been in the class for like three weeks, and they've only spent 37 minutes in my class. Okay, one caveat here, the time didn't start until this Saturday. I actually cleared that with an instructor person just to make sure I got it right. So the total activity is as of last Saturday. But it's kind of, it's a cool feature, but think about it. Just because a student clicked around and maybe opened up a page and then went and made a meal and watched a movie does not mean they were actually doing anything. So take that number with a huge, huge crate of salt, basically. Um, personally, I don't love that number, but it is kind of cool to look at. Um, other higher ups may really like that number, so you know, if you need to give them a number, you could potentially use that one. Um, and then the last activity, though, is really important. So if you want to know when was the last time your students actually logged into your course, that's a great one to look at. Page views, another thing. Uh, you can't see every time a student clicked on it, but you can see how many times and the last time. So if a student says, well, yeah, I looked at that study guide, you can go check and actually see, did your student look at the study guide? Um, and then we've got a custom report. This is a really awesome custom report uh, that we have at Richland that if anyone's interested, let me know. I'll be happy to talk to, with you about it. But for financial aid purposes, we have to actually give financial aid a list of every time an online student actually turned in an assignment and the date, because that's what our attendance is based off of, is the last date a, an a student turned something in. And so basically, we've got a report. We enter in a, the student's ID number. Bam, I can see all of this for a specific course, print it off, email it, do whatever. So it's a really nice custom report. It's really nice to see are students doing their actual work, and when was the last time they did work? So basically, Canvas provides a lot of information. I mean, obviously, that was kind of overwhelming, right? I mean, that was a lot to look at. Um, it's a lot, but they don't really show you a big picture. So me clicking through all those slides, right? Do you really know which one of your students is necessarily the most at risk in your class? How many admins are here? Okay, good number of admins. How many of you know who your number one at-risk student is? How many of you know who your top 10 at-risk? Do you find out because an, an instructor maybe contacted you or maybe the student, but then do you actually know how at-risk those students are? Well, you can go into, let's say you've got a student with five classes. So then as an admin, you're gonna go into all five classes and go through all those different reports, right? <coughs> trying to figure out what's going on with that student. So what I really like and what I've got in my uh, superhero tool belt is Aspire Analytics, their Dropout Detective. Uh, Dropout Detective offers a proactive, big picture retention solution. So first of all, it's quick, efficient, and it shows you in, in it's just an initial glance. It integrates directly with Canvas. So if you're an instructor, you log into your regular course in Canvas, right there in your left navigational links, Dropout Detective. You click at it, here you are. Here's all the students in your class. You can see who's in red, obviously most at risk, who's in yellow, kind of who's getting there, and who's in green. You don't have to search through everything. You don't have to go hunting for your most at risk students. Here they are. At an admin level, and then this is the bell and whistle. This is like, oh, holy grail, clouds are parting, summer's coming through. As an administrator, I log into Canvas, 
go into my main admin you know, area, left navigation, Aspire Analytics Dropout Detective. I click on it, I get this list for every single one of my online students. I see every online student and who's most at risk. I can tell you right now who my top five at-risk online students are, and that's accumulation of all of their courses. So at a course level, an instructor only sees the students who are at risk for their particular course. At an admin level, I see all of that data combined to see which students are most at risk for all of their online courses. So literally, quick, efficient, you click a button, here you go. But let's take a closer look. So let's say you say, you know, this Harper student, there's some really big issues here. So you click on the student's name. Here you've got extra information about what's going on with the student. So to start out with, you've got uh, last login, login ID, and all of their contact information. So any information the student has provided for Canvas, and, you know, they've entered in, here's my Facebook, here's my cell phone number, whatever, all of that is right there at the top of the screen. Ooh, sorry. You also have your course information. So you can immediately see which courses the student is in. You can see their grade in the course, their missing assignments, the last time they accessed the course, the last time they submitted an assignment, which, wait a second, that's huge. Last time they accessed the course versus last time they submitted an assignment. I know we have a lot of students who might log in, but they're just kind of lurking and they're not turning anything in. Well, what you really want to know, you don't really care about that last access. You want to know last time they submitted something. Um, and then you also have an attendance drop rate. And this can actually be customized to your own particular school. So if you've got like a, you know, no show for 10 days, they get dropped, they kind of base that number off of whatever you want it customized to. Then the other part that I'm kind of really in love with, oh, and back for the course part, if you click on the link to one of those courses, it will actually take you to that specific course and then you can go in and all that information that I was talking about that Canvas has, well, instead of doing that for every student and not really knowing what you're looking for, you now know this student has an issue. He's missing this many assignments. I'm now gonna go look and see how much is he communicating with the instructor. I'm gonna go look and see what is his overall activity in the course. So basically, you use Canvas to kind of pick out which students are most, or use Dropout Detective to pick out the students who are most at risk, and then you go into the actual course and use all of those Canvas course analytics to really dive in and look at what is happening with the student. Is this a long-term issue? Is this a short-term issue? What's happening? Um, something else I love, and this is actually also a brand new feature, um, the additional tools, um, the overview is just that main course area, um, but they have now call notes. Um, not call, call notes is something that's been around. Um, but call notes are basically, if I contact the student in any way, I just type in, you know, emailed student. Or if I talk to a faculty member about this student, I can say, you know, contacted faculty member whoever, and they said blah, blah, blah. The instructor can also add call notes. It goes both ways, and if instructors entered call notes, I can see what that instructor's written. Um, you can also have it to where anything I say, the instructor can see. Now, I don't have it set up that way just because of FERPA reasons, because I'm typing information about multitudes of courses, and we're in a higher education setting, so teachers can't see what I'm saying about what's going on in other classes. But depending on your institution, you can make it to where the instructors see anything you write as well. Um, you can also use this, I know some schools are using this for advising, trio, and things like that, where you can actually assign advisors or assign people to certain groups of students, and then they only have access to those students and can go in and get this information and add their call notes. Okay, now this is the bell and whistle. This is the one they literally just implemented, um, I think, last week. Um, or the week before, and it is the risk index history. And what this literally shows you is the student's risk over time. So you can literally see that, okay, this student started out doing okay, but they've been in risk for a really long time. So instead of just seeing that one number, which, okay, one number's great, they're in red, but wouldn't you really like to know, is this a student who's been in green and all of a sudden popped into red, or is this a student who's kind of a, a habitual red person, you know? It might make a difference between which services you think to provide or the conversation you have with a student. Uh, I thought this information was so important that prior to Dropout Detective putting this in, uh, my assistant was actually manually going in and collecting this data, and we had a spreadsheet where we tracked all of these students. So when Dropout Detective um, took my very nice, please, 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 could we have it idea and implemented it, I was pretty much over the moon happy about being able to see overall how is the student doing without just having that snapshot. So basically for me, uh, access to Dropout Detective um, is priceless. Um, I, I literally think of it as a holy grail. I think of it as, uh, you know, Batman riding a unicorn with rainbows. I mean, seriously, it is the most amazing thing because as an admin, I never had access to this information. 
Um, literally, when I was talking about students don't self-identify, my at-risk students did not self-identify. Our faculty are amazing. In fact, I've got one, well, technically two of them in the audience here. They're amazing, but you know what? They've got a lot going on. They don't have time to be combing through all of that information, potentially looking for, now, which one of my students is at risk, right? I mean, it's tough. It's tough just to keep up on your grading you know, versus digging into all of that. And so the fact that not only now do they have a place to where click on one button and boom, they can see who's most at risk and we can have that conversation. But you know what, if that instructor's too busy and they don't just click on that one button, I'm still clicking on that one button every day and seeing who's at risk and then starting that conversation with the instructor of, hey, I noticed, you know, Sam, Joey, whoever is having an issue, can you fill me in or do you know what's happening or do you think we should have a conversation? Um, so basically, that was the beginning part. So what do we do with all this information? We've got a huge amount of information, um, but you know, with, you know, we, we have a lot of risk because we've got all this information, we've got a lot of responsibility to do with it. So what we did at Richland was basically come up with a systematic retention strategy. Um, we've got our dropout detective, we've got college analytics, which for me is also, you know, number of classes the student has had prior to this class, number of classes the student has dropped before this. So there's a lot of other information outside of Canvas and dropout detective. Um, but then we have our course analytics from Canvas. And so we kind of combine all of that with online learning, our faculty, um, and then our student support services. And so this is kind of our overarching what we do. We really like to think that it starts from the faculty member. Um, I might have a, start the conversation with a faculty member, but we normally leave it up to the faculty member to communicate with the student. Um, unless the faculty member indicates, I want you for whatever reason to communicate with the student, we really feel that it has to be a faculty-driven process. Um, in fact, We've really gone through a lot of discussions and we've had uh, meetings and things to discuss the best way to implement it. And it really was that it needed to be faculty focused. And that's why it's so great that faculty have access to that dropout detective link because they can start it. Now, if I email them and say, hey, I'm not sure if you noticed, but the student is having issues, that's fine, that's not a problem. But ultimately, it's the faculty member who says, yeah, I'm gonna contact that student. Or you know what, I think I need to refer them to SuccessNet. Or I think I need to you know, get them to the tutoring center. So we really do let this be a faculty-driven process. Um, I just kind of provide support and kind of an overview to where we just make sure students don't slip through the cracks. So what's the really big thing is frequently monitor students uh, and focus your efforts on those most at risk. So like I said before, Sometimes it would take a really long time, especially if you're a faculty member, and for me, as an admin, you really couldn't get this information, but now that we have it, we're really able to focus our efforts. So instead of just kind of sending out a blanket email, like, hey students, if you're having issues, here's some of our support services. Well, now we can actually target students with specific emails saying, you know, we can see you're having this issue, here's some different support services that will help with your specific problems. So it's really great um, to not only monitor, but we can really focus on those students. Um, really important to be aware of student risk factors. Um, big ones here, infrequent logins. So just because a student's getting an A, if they're only logging in like once every two weeks, that might be, well, not only for you to look at your class and why they can get an A and only log in every two weeks, um, but it also might be a key like, what really is going on with a student? Are they maybe potentially starting to head down? Um, you know, they might be getting an A now, but what if they have zeros in the last three assignments? So there's a potential there. Um, missing assignments, obviously it's a huge red flag. Depending on how you do your course or even your online course, as an instructor, you might not realize how many assignments students are actually missing. Um, if it's a quiz that's auto grading, you might not have a clue until you all of a sudden realize that student's failing. I mean, so that's why it's really important to monitor those missing assignments. Low grades, obviously low grades are important, but they're not everything. Um, like I said before, just having, you know, if the student's getting a B or a C, you can't say, oh, that student automatically doesn't need help. That B or C could be from they did great at the beginning of the semester and they're now on this downward you know, slope that you could potentially email them, contact them and say, hey, what's going on? What can we do? Um, high credit load. We've actually really seen that the higher the credit load, especially for online courses, so multiple online courses, the more at risk students end up being. Um, the more likely they are to drop, the more likely they are to fail. Um, it's just a potential success issue, and so you really need to be aware. Um, I can tell you that I actually, at the beginning of each semester, I pull up our online students and see which students are taking multiple online classes, and I kind of personally flag them and monitor those students just to kind of provide that little extra of, you know, I know you're taking five online classes, that's huge and I'll just pay you a little bit of extra attention. Now granted in Dropout Detective, obviously if I click on their name, I can see that, but I kind of monitor them even when they're in the yellow, just because five online classes is a lot. 
um, like I said, than multiple online courses, and then only taking online courses. I don't know about you guys, and if, you're, if you have a online only campus or college, this isn't quite the big deal, but for us to where many of our students are taking traditional hybrid and online courses, those students who are only taking online courses are usually taking them because they have a lot of other risk factors, and these are maybe they're working full-time jobs, have families, um, there's, you know, Issues maybe SES, they can't drive out, we don't have a really great bus system. So there's a lot of other things if they're only taking online classes that might be going on that we really need to kind of watch out for. Uh, communication, documentation is key. Um, as my kind of circular sheet showed, you have to communicate. We have to be in communication with the faculty, Faculty have to be in communication with administrators, support services, and documentation. I can't say enough about documentation. It's so hard to be, I mean, I don't, I don't know about you guys, but I can't remember what happened last week. So if you don't document it, if you don't write down, this is who I talked to, this is what was said, this is what the plan is, you're not gonna remember it. So it's really, really important, not only communicate, but document everything. Dropout Detective makes it really easy. Even if you don't have Dropout Detective, use the call, use in the gradebook now, they've got something where you've got like the notes in the gradebook, put it in the notes column, do something, but please document, document. Um, refer students to appropriate support services, it's huge. Um, I don't know about you guys, and I'm not gonna go into a lot of detail because everyone's set up differently. We've got some really great student support services, use them. They will love you for it. Uh, I can't count the times that we've actually had our success lady say, oh, you sent me students. I mean, she's like giddy that we send her students who are at risk. So please, use your support services. Um, they will love you for it. Uh, so the big questions though, you really, this is what you really care about, right? What are the actual results? So is this like all, you know, yeah, what, what, what would we really find? First of all, Dropout Detective and Canvas are perfect partners, you know, like Batman and Robin. They just, they go together perfectly. We, we really like them a lot together. Dropout Detective does a really great job predicting which students online, or which online students are at risk, and Canvas is really good at filling in the details. So we've got a per perfect partnership. Um, what we found is in regards to student risk level, this was for spring 2014, about 18% of our students were flagged as being in red, which remember, here's red, yellow. 18% uh, of our students were flagged as red at some point during the semester. And so remember I had that spreadsheet and we were tracking. Any student who ever flagged in red, we instantly started tracking that student every week and monitoring what they were doing. So overall, 18% at some point in the semester were flagged as red. This is then taking that 18% and narrowing it down, and this is the end of semester results for any student who has ever flagged for being high risk. So this doesn't necessarily mean they were high risk at the end of the semester, this just means at some point in the semester they were high risk. Um, we did have 31% uh, who dropped, uh, we had 27% fail, but we had 35% who did pass. Um, we also had a mixed bag group um, that was 7%, and this is where if they were taking multiple online classes, maybe they passed one, failed one. Passed one, took an incomplete for one, or any combination of, imagine if you've got multiple courses, and that's why I didn't break it down any further than that. Um, the really interesting thing, all of those students who failed were all listed in red. Every single student was listed in red. So it's not like we had students that dropout detective was flagging uh, as per being perfectly fine, and then they failed at the end of the semester. So all of our students who failed were listed in red. Um, those who dropped, on average, they were in red about 2.8 weeks before they dropped the class. So for me, that's really huge, because you remember that history? I can now start looking and saying, the longer you're in red, way more likely. What I hope to do in the future is now that we've got easy access to that, to really start doing some statistics to really figure out, you know, if a student is red, in red three weeks, they're X more likely to drop and all of that stuff. So I'm really excited about having this information and being able to use it in the future. So what about retention? This is, this is the really, really big one. Um, so previous, we were about 79.5%. Um, that kind of bounces around, which is why I just did an average for the previous two years. Fall, we did our first initial implementation of Dropout Detective. We were at 81.3%, and um, that was with just me having access to Dropout Detective. Dropout Detective didn't actually give or uh, provide the faculty access until about November of last year. So that spring number is our first year, our first semester of faculty having that full access to Dropout Detective and all of that information. Um, and as you can see, that, that's a pretty huge increase um, from the different semesters up. But okay, so you might say, and I'm sure some of you will come and ask me, what do you mean by retention, right? Well, that just means they, they didn't drop the class. That doesn't mean that they didn't fail the class, right? So what about success? How many students got an A, B, or C? Now granted, this isn't quite as good as you know, it was 80-some percent, but we went from fall 2013, 72%, increased 5% to 
from sp to spring 2014 to 77% who, who finished with an A, B, or C. Now, of course, I actually, I, I majored in stats. You know, my husband's a statistician. I will not say that this proves anything, but if you want to draw your own, you know, correlations, you know, your own, you know, if then, you know, that type of thing, I'm saying this looks pretty good, especially because we had already been using Canvas. There wasn't any other significant change to what we had been doing between the fall semester and the spring semester. So that was ABC, that was a, that was a huge difference for us. Um, unfortunately though, we cannot save everyone. So just like Spider-Man could not save his uncle, we, we can't save everyone. But luckily we can retain and make a difference with some of them. So thank you very much. Please make sure you grab your handout magnet or if there's any questions. I would talk to those two people. The question was, what's the fee model? I can tell you that we are an extremely poor school. I had my budget cut 13% three years ago, and I had it cut another 10% this year. Um, so literally, I've lost 23% of my budget in the last three years with no of that back, and we're able to afford dropout detective. So not only that, but if you think about how much money you're getting back in retaining students and then getting them to come back when they're successful, we feel that it's going to make our money back, basically. So yes? Yes, the question is, are we using any automated part of Dropout Detective? And yes, we are. We're using the automated text messaging, which basically will send any student who hasn't logged in in a certain number of days a text message saying, hey, we've noticed you haven't logged in. To be successful, you should really be logging into your class you know, X number of times. And that is an automated feature that's built into the system, which is great. Yes? Good question. Um, the question was, do we set the parameters for what's considered at risk? And basically what we do is work with Dropout Detective. It's kind of like a litmus thing. They have an initial, you know, here's the thing. But I've actually talked with Kim a couple times and said, well, you know, I think maybe students are being flagged that shouldn't or oh, I think. And they can literally go in and kind of a little bit adjust the algorithms, so to speak, to get it. But you can work with Kim and they're amazing. I don't know if it can be how it was adjusted. I would talk with, with Kim. Oh, it looks like overall. So, but you, they're right back there. Um, they're amazing. I would talk with them. Yes? Does Dropout Detective retain previous semester information for the students? Not that I'm aware of. That's a good question. The question was, does Dropout ret Detective retain? Does it? We do have access to that? Thank you. Yes, um, so it does retain a certain amount of information. So just it's going to be starting soon. If a student has failed in a previous semester, they're actually flagged higher in the next semester. And I know for me personally, you can see, yeah, the notes do carry over. All of the notes carry over. And as long as you have access to the spreadsheets, you can download all of that data as well. So it's a good question. Anyone else? OK. If not, thank you very much.